Adventurous kids explore with education and learning what a wildlife is in the Everglades. I want to explore the museum of discovering science. What plants do butterflies like? I want to know about Key West. Adventurous kids learning and fun. Adventurous kids! Today I'm going to tell you about carnivorous plants. Carnivorous plants are plants that derive some or most of their nutrients, but not energy, which they derive from photosynthesis, from chomping and consuming animals or protozoans, typically insects and other arthropods. Carnivorous plants have adapted to grow in places where the soil is thin or poor in nutrients, exposing nitrogen, such as acidic bogs. Lifespan depends on the species but some carnivorous plants, such as sundews, can survive up to 50 years in the wild. There are 630 different carnivorous plants that can be found throughout the world, except on Antarctica. The greatest variety of carnivorous plants can be seen in North America. These plants inhabit bogs, rocky areas, and other types of soils that are poor in nutrients. Carnivorous plants can survive on different altitudes of various climates, but they do not tolerate dry habitats. Most species of carnivorous plants are small herbivorous plants that can reach 12 inches in height. Some species look like bushy vines. They could go to the height of 3 feet. Carnivorous plants can live on the ground or in the water. Just like other plants, carnivorous plants obtain energy in the process of photosynthesis. They absorb sunlight and carbon dioxide from the atmosphere to create food, sugar. Most carnivorous plants are pollinated by insects. In the case of pollination, insects are attracted by beautiful and colorful flowers. Carnivorous plants are often very colorful, have beautiful smell, and produce large quantities of nectar. All carnivorous plants are divided into five groups based on the mechanisms they use to catch their next meal. Diet of almost all carnivorous plants consists of small insects and their larvae. Larger species of carnivorous plants can digest small mammals and frogs. The plants get extra nutrients from feeding off these creatures. One of the best known carnivorous plants is the Venus flytrap. Its two leaf blades have tooth like projections on the outer edge. The reddish inside surface has stiff, touch sensitive hairs that serve as triggers. With the two hairs are brushed, Leaf snaps shut. If the prey is tiny enough, it can escape through the teeth. Larger creatures get dissolved and digested by the plant. It takes as many as 10 days to completely digest insects and reopen this trap. However, Venus flytraps cannot digest exoskeletons. Instead, when this trap opens, it spits out the bones of the insects. Even though Venus flytraps are all carnivorous plants, they cannot eat the same types of meat a human can. If you feed a Venus flytrap a fast food burger, the plant will turn black, white, and die. Sundews are fine paper plants that trap prey and sticky hairs on their leaves. They make up one of the largest group of carnivorous plants. Long tentacles protrude from their leaves, each with a sticky gland at the tip. These droplets look like dew glistening in the sun, thus their name. The glands produce nectar to attract prey, Powerful adhesive to trap it and enzymes to digest it. Once an insect becomes stuck, nearby tentacles close around the insect and smother it. Sand dunes can reach a height of up to 10 inches. These plants feed on insects. Mosquitoes are abundant in the sand dunes' preferred habitat and can make up a significant portion of their diet in these locations. Sand dunes can kill a trapped insect in about 15 minutes, but may digest it over a few weeks. Many species of sundew can self-pollinate, while others reproduce through seeds. Pitcher plants have structures shaped like pitchers, bowls, or trumpets. In some types, the structures make up the whole of the plant's leaves. In other types, the structures are just part of the leaves. In these types, the structures go at the end of string-like parts called tendrils. Leaves of plants with pitfall traps, such as the pitcher plant, are shaped like funnel that contains digested enzymes on the bottom. It lures bugs in the promise of sweet, delicious nectar. 
After landing on the slippery edge of the leaves, insects will fall into the pitcher into a pool of enzymes or digestive juices. These enzymes dissolve the insect's soft parts. The plant then absorbs the soft parts through the walls of the pitcher. A whole community of aquatic critters thrives inside the pitcher plant pools. For example, frogs, some incredibly tiny, lay their eggs on the pitchers and their tadpoles grow up swimming in the pitcher plant water. Carnivorous plants with lobster pot traps use inwardly oriented hairs to force insects to walk towards the pool and enzymatic juices. A lobster pot trap is a chamber that is easy to enter and whose exit is either difficult to find or obstructed by inward pointing bristles. A Y-shaped modified leaf allows prey to enter but not exit. Inward oriented pointing hairs force the prey to move in a particular direction. Prey entering the spiral entrance that closes the wand, the upper two arms of the Y are forced to move inexorably towards the stomach at the lower arm of the Y where they are digested. The carnivorous bromeliads are members of the pineapple family. They are exclusively of the New World, particularly in the Caribbean and Guana Highlands. They have extremely long strap-like leaves that are closely compacted into a whorl or tubular barrel, which they often collect in whole water. All these species are bright yellow and our rosette shaped leaves appear similar to flowers. This feature may attract insects initially. They also have a UV reflective powder coating their leaves. This powder is attractive to the insects that are sensitive to UV light. In addition, the plants seem to secrete a sweet scent that may be appealing to insects. Once they are drawn inside the plant's water-filled tank, most insects are not able to get footing, to climb out, and drown in the water that is always sorted within. The insects decompose and make a nutrient soup that the bromeliad takes in through the trichomes on its leaves. Dewy pine leaves are thin and range from 8 to 10 inches in length. They are lined with hair-like red-tinted glands. This is where the dewy is secreted. Each drop of glue catches sunlight sparkling like a leaf after a brisk morning dew. The dew drop itself acts like a magnifying glass for the red coloring of the gland beneath it. The part that is most irresistible to unexpected insects? The plant smells of sweet honey. When an insect comes into contact with the dew mullage, the droplet sticks to it and detaches from the plant. As the insect struggles to free itself from the glue, it comes into contact with more glands and gets further coated. Eventually, breathing coals get covered and the insect suffocates dying on a leaf. Pretty soon, the plant absorbs new nutrients from their decaying bodies. Three pines grow in dry sandy soil. They retain relatively shallow roots and are naturally found on hills among sandy gravel in between boulders where they can catch the most one-off rainwater. Dewy pine flowers are bright yellow and even the flower stalks appear to have carnivorous tendencies. Waterworts use sticky, granular leaves to lure, trap, and digest insects. Most are light shades of green, but some turn pink in bright conditions, a color that may help attract prey. Of the roughly 80 known species, 13 are native to Europe, to North America and some to Northern Asia. The largest number of species is in South and Central America. Ladder warts, like roots, usually have a horizontal floating system, bearing simple or divided leaves. Small carnivorous bladders are produced along the stem and give range from dark to transparent in color. Bladder warts are covered in little bladder like traps. The outsides of the bladders have trigger hairs. When a swimming critter touches a hair, the trap springs open and sucks them in. With this trap is able to snap shut in as little as 1 35th of a second. The bladder wart is 100 times faster than the Venus flytrap by catching its prey. Some species of carnivorous plants use insects' waste to absorb all the nutrients they need. Some carnivorous plants even live near large urban centers if they can find the white piece of habitat. This means that you may be able to see some in the wild near you. Just contact the local nature center and 
ask if they have any progress on carnivorous plants. Charles Darwin, the famous scientist to study them, published a book on them and even defended them in letters. The oldest carnivorous plant leaf fossil from a relative of Wardula was found in the Baltic amber that's 35 million to 47 million years old. Many carnivorous plant species are at risk. Threats include habitat loss, pollution, and poaching. Venus flytraps, for example, live in the just a relatively small region around Wilmington, North Carolina. Poachers dig them up and sell the plants for a small amount of cash. The problem has gone so out of hand that stealing fire traps is now a felony punishable by over a year in jail. If you decide to grow carnivorous plants as unusual pets, ensure that you are obtaining stock that was cultivated in the greenhouse and not collected from the wild. Thanks for watching this episode of Adventurous Kids. What did you learn today? Adventurous Kids. Adventurous Kids. What was the most interesting fact? Adventurous Kids. Adventurous Kids. Adventurous. Adventurous.